thanks to MLB The Show and SDS along with PlayStation for allowing me early access to the game. It allowed me to get these videos out to you guys pretty quickly. So without them, we wouldn't have these videos on drop day. So thanks to them. Once again, let's hop into today's video. So today I'm gonna do but woo! So today I'm gonna be doing one of my first tip videos for franchise. A lot of you guys have been looking for tip videos on how to go through franchise. Also, a lot of people coming over from Xbox haven't played MLB the show before. I have it's been some years since the last time you played the game. So today we're gonna be breaking down scouting to the best of my knowledge. Scouting's probably the most difficult part of franchise. It just a lot of it is just getting lucky, but at the same time, there are some steps to help you get lucky. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to break it down for you. If you do enjoy it, the best way to show me support is hit that like button. I'll do another video probably today as you're seeing this one. If you hit a thousand likes, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm probably going to be double uploading for the next couple days. So if you want to see those videos, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel and enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button. And of course, get in the comment section. Let me know other tips that you guys need. And on top of that, any other big brain ideas, let me know down below. If you haven't followed any of my social media, especially my Twitter, that's the best time to know when I will be posting a video. Keep up to date when videos are going live, like I just said. Um, any other stuff that I tweet, just go see it. That's probably the best way to interact with me as well. Go follow my Twitter. And then, of course, if you're looking for some Diamond Dynasty content from me, I'm going to be doing a No Money Spent series. Go check out the link in the description to my second channel. That'll be all the Diamond Dynasty content there. So enough with the plugs. Let's get into it. Let's break down scouting. All the stuff you don't need to see. Let's just get into it. All right. So once you get into the franchise, once you get, you know, into the whole situation, um, the big thing for me is I'm going to go to contracts. I'm going to go to scouts and i'll put myself in the corner one make sure you have enough money to afford new scouts which you can see with the budget information but also make sure you have enough money to hire scouts and then on top of that sign your picks um because there's been a couple of times where I, I didn't realize that i messed up and then i put myself in a sticky situation so always make sure you have enough money to hire new scouts if you can't you know wait a couple years wait a season or two then get some new scouts but let me break it down for you. So over here, you can see Kevin J. This is the scout that is available to hire. Efficiency, pitchers, discovery, and position players. The position players and the pitchers, pretty self-explanatory. The higher they are, the better they scout those positions, right? There it goes. Efficiency, efficiency. The higher it is, the quicker they can scout a player. They're more efficient. They get through the report a lot quicker. So if it's lower, Usually it takes about a week or two to scout a player. If it's higher, it usually takes like three, four days. All right. And then discovery, the higher the discovery, the better players they find. There you go. That breaks down all the categories of your scouts. So now looking at my current scouts, obviously what I look for is the, the pitchers and the position players to be as high as possible. And then if I had to choose one, if I had to choose one, I always go with discovery to be the one between discovery and efficiency. Just because I would rather you find better players and take longer to scout them rather than taking longer to scout or them being quicker at scouting someone, but I'm not gonna find as good of players scouting wise. So it really just depends. It, it's really up to personal preference, but I prefer discovery. So I'm looking at the scout that I have right now for the central region, Jeremy Shimizu or Jermaine Shimizu. I think he's pretty good. Yeah, he doesn't scout pitchers well, but he's got great discovery. He's got pretty good position player scouting and good efficiency. Another thing is the regions, Central, East, West, and International. I always try to have one of those for, um, I always try to have one for each region. That way I can cover each region pretty well. If you scout outside the region, you do get a little bit of a hit in his ability to scout that player. But for the most part, I try to have like a central east west international scout all right so if i'm picking between my central scout um i might actually pick james clark to be my central scout he just looks a little bit better a little bit more well-rounded than shimizu actually ah, they're about the same i'm gonna go with shimizu though just because he's got better discovery so with that being said i need a international and an east scout right off the rip so looking at my East scouts, I'm probably going to go with, I'm going to go with Elbert over uh, Hartley. And then I need an international scout. So I'm looking at this. I'm going to go with James Shedd over Clark. And then the West scout, I'll keep the West scout for now. Discovery is low, but he does have okay, 
efficiency, unless this Joe Yang guy is better. He's all right. He, it's not too much different. Um, we'll, we'll just go with him. So there we go. Okay, so um, I should have looked at my budget because I don't think I turned off. Okay, I still have plenty of money to work with. Okay, so I didn't turn off ignore or I didn't turn on ignore budgets. So that way I could just not worry about the budgets for the video. But here we go. Let me break down scouting. Obviously, when you hop into scouting, it'll give you a breakdown immediately. Like once you hop into it for the first time, it'll usually give you a tutorial. Um, I've already looked into it, so it's not going to give me the tutorial. But it will give you a tutorial, so you could always read that. I'm not going to lie to you guys. When I do my rebuilds, I usually let the CPU handle scouting just because scouting does take a little bit of time. It does take a lot of like you got to pay attention to it quite a bit. So it, it's just one of those things that takes if you if you really get into it, it does take a lot of time. And for rebuilds, I normally just try to let the CPU handle it and then I pick my draft picks. So here we go. This is the best that I can break it down for you. So Jermaine, uh, of course, Jermaine Shimizu, as you can see. He's really efficient, he's really good with discovery, and he looks better at position players than he does at pitchers. So I'm most likely not going to let him search for pitchers, I'm most likely going to focus on the outfield, the infield, or catchers. Primary skill, I usually go for contact because what I've noticed is if you search for contact, you're going to get players with better contact, vision, and discipline. Those are the players that usually sim better. So if you sim a lot in your franchise, I highly recommend searching for contact. If you play with a player a lot, if you play a lot of your franchise games, really it just comes down to what players you do best with. So you really could just look for whatever you want. But if you sim a lot, like I do, I normally look for contact players because those are the ones that do the best. And of course you wanna keep it in the region that your scout is. So contact is my, my recommendation. And then if you're searching for pitchers, my main two skills that I look for are clutch. Those are for relievers. High clutch, best for relievers. And command, those usually give me the better control and the better per nines. Those are the two that I'm looking for. Again, doesn't really matter if you play a lot of games because it just really depends on who you do the best with. But those are the two skills I recommend for pitchers. And then there's also velocity, straightforward. Movement, straightforward. So if you sim a lot, I recommend command and clutch for pitchers. And then if you sim a lot for your um, position players, I recommend con uh, contact being the skill for you. So there you go. That's what I would do. Um, I'll just set up a quick, um, what is he, pitchers? So I'll just set up a quick little scouting mission for each player or each scout, I will say. I'll just set this one up for like power. Um, normally what I've noticed with power is powers through the roof, but vision and discipline are low. And if you sim a lot and your vision and discipline are low, they strike out a lot. So you just expect the low average, low on base percentage. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and that's why I highly prioritize contact, vision, and discipline when I sim a lot because those are the guys who have a high average, get on base a lot, things like that. So this guy, oops, this guy searches pitches better. So this one I'll do command since I think I did clutch for this one. So scouting missions have all been set after breaking it down for you guys. Normally, um, I'll go back to this. Normally, it takes about two weeks to get through a scouting mission. Obviously, the higher efficiency, the quicker they do it. But um, normally, it takes about two weeks. So let me sim two weeks. We'll we'll talk about scouting in a second. All right. So on April 14th of this year, so he finished his complete or like he completed his mission. You can see I got three notifications. So that means three people finished their scouting or two of them scouted their mission, finished scouting their missions. And we still got two more. So I'm not too sure why I got three notifications if two people are still scouting. So with that being said, we've got two people who have finished their mission and we're good to go. We've got basically what I what I look for when I go through the calendar. Like I said, it usually takes about two, two and a half weeks um, and then I'll do another mission and then I'll finish scouting for players in April and then I'll spend the whole month of May scouting the players like individual players and then the draft is usually the second or the third as you can see in the next phase under regular season it says draft is in 45 days so essentially i've got yeah about all of may and i've got the rest of april until the draft and then the draft like i said is usually the first week of june so i usually spend a full month scouting for new players and then i spend a month scouting individual players you can always just do your first mission like I just did. You can just be done here and then scout individual players for the rest of the time. It's really just dependent on you. 
So we'll just say, hey, let's start scouting individual players now. So Shimizu, really good with position players. So I want to focus on him scouting position players. This is how it's broken down. So obviously you could sort it by potential, have the higher potential players at the top. You can have the lower players at the bottom. What I prefer to do is the sooner the ETA, the better, because I know they're going to be higher rated and they're also going to be quick, like almost MLB ready. That's what I search for. Obviously, I want the potential to be high as well, but let me break down potential to you right here, right here. You can see well above average, above average, average, below average, well below average. So the scale, the scale is 20 to 80. 20 is bad and 80 is really good. It doesn't mean that they're going to be an 80 overall and a 20 overall, but that is the scouting that they do for prospects. Essentially, 20 is like a zero, 80 is like a hundred. Um, they just make the scale a little bit smaller. So just because this has 80 potential, it doesn't mean that they only have 80 potential. That actually means it's like A plus potential and 20 is like F. Okay, it's just a little bit smaller of a scale and that's just how they break down prospects in real life, 20 to 80. So. 80 is like very, very good. And that's why they put it down at the bottom so that you can actually see it rather than you thinking, oh, they only have 80 potential. That's not that great. No, 80 potential is actually really, really good. So now let me break down the players. So I've already mentioned what I look for in pitchers. I want high uh, per nines and I also want high control, which looking at this, it does look a little complicated it does i the, the the color scheme also a little difficult to look at i'm not gonna lie um so if i had to choose what per nines i prefer especially for simming seasons i want high hits per nine i want high walks per nine and i want good control those are the three kind of stats that i look for if i'm simming a lot especially for starters normally if you have low hits per nine and high walks per nine their their whip is through the roof a lot of earned runs a lot of runners on base it just ends up being a bad pitcher usually usually obviously you want as high hits per nine and per nines as possible but if you had to choose try to get the ones that have the high walks and high hits per nine those are the ones that usually pick for starters um unless you know they just have all really nine or really high per nines then we're golden closers i usually just try to find good control and good uh per nines so there's that Hitters, I've already talked about it as well. I normally look for high contact, high vision, high discipline. Fielding, I know it'll improve as years go on. I'm not really wor worried about fielding. Um, if they have good power, good control, or good contact, vision, and discipline, then it's good. But if I'm really just looking for a sim style franchise, I'm going high contact, high vision, high discipline. There you go. So looking at this player right here, Charlie Lazinski, he's got 80 overall, 80 potential good contact, good vision, good discipline. I mean, that checks all my boxes, but my scouting accuracy is pretty low. So he's in the central spot. I'm actually gonna assign him to Shimizu by hitting square, assigns him there. So I don't expect him to stay 80 potential. I definitely expect him to drop. I also don't expect him to stay at 80 overall. I expect him to drop. I don't think he's gonna be that good. He might end up being the best prospect possible, but we'll have to wait and see. Next up, let me see who else I can find. Alfonso Chavez looks decent kind of checks all my boxes his current grades are the light blue he's got a good he's got about average about average for the case per nine the walks per nine are above average I mean he's kind of checking off all my boxes here let's scout him he's in the east let's uh let's uh let's line him up with Elbert Elbert Gerald Elbert we'll we'll line him up there um for these ones, obviously, you kind of want to line up international to international, but of course, you don't have to. Um, so we'll go with that. So let's let's scout a high potential player. Blue chip prospects are kind of like your safe bets. You know they're going to be very very good, even if it does take longer for them to get into the majors. Blue chip prospects are like your guaranteed good players, so you don't have to worry about those. They will be good. Um, so like this guy, yeah, he's a low overall currently, but give him a few seasons he will be good these guys are basically like your 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 safe bets everything is going to be okay these guys are going to be good so this guy right here if i had the shot to get him i would pick him up 100 percent. so blue chip you, you're good to go those are your safety nets um so yeah let me let me find a international scout that we are international prospect that we don't have scouted yet so juan barrios more of a long-term guy he's not going to be eta or mlb ready till at least 2025 but let's scout him anyways. Let's see what we can get. Joe Yang. He's in the West. 
I saw someone that was in the west up here that we didn't have scouted. But I kind of want him to be a little bit closer to ETA ready. So, we'll, 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 we'll go with Junior Piliero. 75 potential on the scale, which is still decent. So, let's, let's, let's scout him. See what happens. Um... And uh, yeah, I'll give it a couple days. It usually takes about three to four days if your player, if your scout's efficiency is a little bit higher. So let me scout a few days and uh, we'll see how it goes. So we'll sim through the date. Boom. We'll go to scouting and they're still scouting. So, okay. L needs a little bit longer. We'll go the full week. That's okay. Not a big deal. We'll uh, go here. Boom. Week is done. And all right. All four of my scouts have been done. So we had Chavez, Piliero, Barrios and Lazinski. So Lazinski was the one that I was most interested in. So let's go check him out now. And you can see he has now 75 potential and he's 60 overall compared to the 80 80 he initially was. So obviously I said he wasn't going to be that good, but he's actually still a pretty good prospect. And this would be someone that I wouldn't look to get in the first round, but I'd probably get him in the second or third round if still available because he's still got good control, uh, control, contact. He's still got vision, discipline that are good rated and also good projected stats as well this would be a player i would definitely be interested in not in the first round but maybe second or third barrios in the left field who's left field right oh yeah juan barrios you can see he dropped off a little bit he was one of those guys that was more of a long-term prospect and this would be a guy i would definitely avoid just none of his stats look good currently and also his projected stats don't look great either so i think this would be a guy definitely just no thank you Alfonso Chavez was another guy we drafted or scouted again potential is not bad but he's more of a late round pick just because of the potential being 70 so he's probably going to sit in actual overalls maybe mid 70s maybe low 80s so again not a bad pick but I kind of wait a little bit longer to pick him up he does have good walks per nine and decent hits per nine so as a late round pickup I don't hate it but again a player I'd probably avoid like I said, I've kind of broken down what I look for in a sim style franchise and what I'm looking for for really good stats. Rafael Salas would be a player I would definitely look at picking up. So there. I mean, scouting players, it's really difficult. It's really, really hard. I would just go with who looks the best. All right, since I'm at the draft, let's let's break it down here. So unfortunately, I'm the 22nd pick, which, which sucks, right? Um, but... Let's, let's take a look at some of the players that were chosen. You can see, like, they, they're good. Like, a lot of them are good. You got some that are high overall, some that aren't. Some are, like, longer-term prospects with their ETAs. And uh, let me see if I can find a high-rated player that was chosen immediately. So, Dion Lewis looks good. Good contact, vision, and discipline. Exactly what I was talking about. Um, But looking at the rest of them, it doesn't look like there was, like, a crazy good one. Salas, not bad. Like, this would actually be a guy that's probably high-rated um elvis ramos closing pitchers so those those are actually really good per nines and everything else that you're looking for but it doesn't look like there's any like 70 overalls which is pretty mind-blowing so um sadly i have no 80 potentials that are highly scouted um i've already sorted through it and um yeah we don't have any we don't have any good players to look for we do have this shortstop though that we scouted so I'm actually tempted to take him since we are lower pick in the first round anyways. And looking at the other players that are available that we have. I might be I might be swayed here by this third baseman. Good contact, good power. And yeah, the scouting accuracy is in the yellow. But this is this is a chance I would take because we already have a pretty decent scouting report. I think this high on the yellow is pretty good. At this this is basically like you've You've got like a 75% chance of success. Like if you if you mess it up, I mean, you, you just got super unlucky at this point. So we could go with Lazinski, be safe, and hope that Woodell or Woodle drops to the next round. Or we could take Woodle now. Or we could take a closing pitcher. Um, so I am I'm I'm gonna take the chance on the starting pitcher because he is 70 overall in the scouting range and i want to see how good he is but i'm also in, you know what no 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 we're gonna go with the shortstop because we we've scouted him we know what he's looking like i'm actually gonna take a shot on him so hopefully one of those players that we just talked about drops i highly doubt he is we'll keep him in the back of the mind um for now actually he did this guy did make it through so you know what we're gonna take a we're gonna take a shot on him because yes we're 75 scouted 
We have good per nines already. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a shot on it. Might as well. Closers, unless you have like zero accuracy on them, as long as you have some accuracy on them, you're usually pretty good. So that's what I would say. Um, I don't remember the other player that we talked about that we were somewhat good on. I think it was someone down here, maybe. Um, so if you have a red scouting bar, really, it, it's like a 50-50 chance of you getting a good player or not. Um, you kind of just have to hope they do well. Normally, if I have no scouting accuracy on a player, I just kind of go, okay, so their current stats look pretty good. Their green scat, green stats are pretty good as well. Um, but normally if it says they're like 70 or 80 overall, they're not going to be that high rated just because it's like, it's kind of like a over projection. Like they're just going to be like, yeah, he's really, really good. And then you're going to end up getting like a guy who's 56 overall with like a 60 potential. So with these type of players, I usually wait until like the fifth or sixth round, kind of the last round to see if they're still available. And if they're still available, then, then I'll take them. But early in the rounds i try to avoid them just because it's such it's such an uncertainty that they're gonna do well i try to pick the higher accuracy players at the beginning and then i just try to take my 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 coin flips at the end um so andy ramirez i'm looking at him i go he looks decent again usually if they're higher overalls i try to avoid them just because i know they're not going to be that high yes there is a chance that they are actually that high and you you, you got yourself a gem but I just I just try to avoid them. I try to go for a little bit safer picks. And um looking at it, let me let me see what we got here. Um you know what? We talked about it. We talked about it. I might go with that that one guy. The first one that I said that, you know what? Let's what was it? Andy Ramirez. We can take a shot on him. Um I'm looking at his current grades though. How is he going to be that high of an overall when his his current grades are really averaging, you know, average to above average, not well above average. So looking at his current grades, I'm expecting him to be more of like a, a 60, maybe a 55 rather than a 75. You see, you see how that works? His light blues, they're kind of averaging to like the 55, 60 range. So I'm, I'm, I'm expecting it to be that rather than the 75 that it's showing on his card. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're looking for players, kind of this guy, it does say 70 overall. Again, I don't see that. So I'm going to avoid him as well. Let me see who's kind of showing what they're actually showing. So it doesn't look like any of them are sadly, but um, we'll, we'll take the first one just to kind of get an idea. Cause we did, we did talk about it. So let's go see what Andy Ramirez is going to be like. All right, so I'm going to take Diego Tavares again. It's not averaging out to an 80 overall, so I do want to see where he is. But that's kind of my rule of thumb. I just kind of look at where their averages are for their current stats just to just to pick them. So this is my last pick, and I'll take um we'll take no Novo Nuvo whatever it is we'll take him and then let's go take a look at the players. I also want to see where we were looking at a player and i want to see if i remember his name salas i think it was salas that we thought was really good so he is 67 overall but let's go take a look at our picks because i'm uh, i'm interested to see where they are so sign draft picks and here we go here we go so not not too bad uh luzinski i did say that he was he was one of those guys that i think was going to be pretty good he did have 75 potential so again that's going to be on the higher scale because 80 is the highest but he's 67 overall you can see his stats in the top corner there he's got 84 potential so again pretty solid pretty solid um derrick haynes again a player that i said closers are usually if you have higher accuracy on them you're pretty safe to pick them um those are pretty straightforward you know, they, there's not too much to mess up with closers. And again, we got a really good pick in the second round here. And then the final one, like I said, I'm looking at his averages. And again, his averages were somewhere in, you know, the the 50s to 60 range. The 50s to 60, or yeah, like 50s to 60s, which most of them are, you know, somewhere in the mid 60s. So again, that was above average, which again is still good. Um, I didn't say this guy was going to be a bust. But then when you translate that to where he is, like I said, potential around 78 overall, 73. So 
His overall is a little higher than I anticipated, but the individual stats are right about where I expected them to be. So, like I said, you kind of have to think about above average kind of being in, you know, the high 60s to 70s range, and that's what you're getting. So, um, the other guys here, you can see Tavares, um, a little, a little bit of a, a surprise to me. Um, 69 overall, nice, but 80 potential. This one was one of those guys was a coin flip. He could have been really good or he could have been really bad. And you know what? His stats were actually really good and they lived up to the hype. So like I said, the not the low scouting reports, it's a coin flip. Who knows what's going to happen? This guy, we had a little bit higher of a scouting report. His per nines didn't look great and it shows, right? This guy, we had no scouting report on. Coin flipped him. He was really good. And then the Lazinski guy, we fully scouted him. So he was a little bit of a safe bet. Derek Haynes, we knew most about him, so he was good. And then we broke down Andy Ramirez by saying that most of his per nines were average to above average, and it turned out exactly where they were. And that's not bad, but like I said, his potential and stuff is probably going to be a little bit lower than the guys that we know have better stats, and look what happens. So there it is. That kind of breaks down everything. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, scouting, it's very coin flip. It's very hit or miss. Who knows what's going to happen? Um... And have no shame in letting the CPU handle it. If you want the CPU to handle it, go ahead and do that. Like I said, I do that for my rebuilds just because it does take a lot of time. It does take a lot of time. It does take a lot of effort to get to understand everything. But just make sure you have really good scouts. And then if you turn it on auto, the scouts will handle everything. They'll give you some good prospects. Sometimes scouts do retire. So make sure that you replace the scouts that retire. Always check your scouts every year. Always make sure that um, you don't lose the scout because if a scout retires, the CPU just hires a random one and then you just gotta hope that that scout that just got hired randomly doesn't suck. So always make sure you have good scouts. Um, and then if you, do, if you do scout the players for pitchers, look for good command, especially the walks per nine and the hits per nine being really high. And then if you're looking for hitters, look for high contact, high vision, high discipline, especially if you sim a lot. If you're playing a lot, just get the best player possible and enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's tips video. If you did, thumbs up down below. Like I said, likes are the easiest way to show any YouTuber support. If you enjoy the video, hit the like button. Not only does it show them that you enjoyed the video, but it also like pushes their video to new people. So just hit the like button for all any kind of videos that you watch. And then if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to have you stick around. And in the comment section, let me know any other tips that you guys need or any other ideas that you guys have. Let me know down below. I'll definitely try to bring them to you. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.